Welcome back. Our Thursday MP trio of trouble has gathered for their final chat of 2014. Green Party regular Elizabeth May is off in Peru giving the government fossil awards and couldn't join us, but we do have Robert Chisholm to hold down the NDP position. Stella Ambler is the lady in blue for the Conservatives. Well, you're wearing black, black. but anyway. And Scott <laughs> Sims waves the red flag for the Liberals. Welcome to you all. Don't. Thank you. Um, I, I got to get your thoughts today when the security guards uh, came into the House of Commons. Uh, very poignant. Uh, I, you guys have probably never had someone parade in front of you that you may owe your lives to. What went through your mind, Stella? Just, I think I, I was thinking what a remarkable team they are and uh, how grateful that I am and how nice it was that we were all together um, in thanking them. It was just, uh, I, I'm glad we were able to, to make that gesture. Um, nice and, change of pace from the normal yeah, shouting. Yeah, it was and really nice. And, um, and, and just to see that the uh, constable uh, who was there who had been injured is fine and, and he was smiling sign, yeah. and happy. Yeah, it was just, it was a great moment. Robert? Well, I, I I was, uh, I was really, you know, moved by the by the scent, by what you saw in their faces, the the pride on the one hand, but also the gratitude that, you know, that we would do this, that you know, that the the House of Commons and the people in it would would take the time to, you know, to pay tribute to them. I I, I really, really I thought was that saying. was uh, that was pretty cool. Scott, last yeah. word to you on this uh, one. I thought it was also amongst what they in addition to what they said. Uh, it was, a, it was a reflection of what our security forces, our people in uniform across this country. It was a testament to us uh, paying tribute to them because if you look at it, you know, municipal police force, RCMP, your OPP, your Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, all these people serve a tremendous, a, a, a tremendous job and, and for them, for us to pay tribute to them in the House of Commons is also a greater reflection of the people that you see every day. All Canadians see them every day in their lives. Mm -hmm. They stand there, they're security guards at the mall or at their, they're at a memorial or anything else that they do. They serve a function and they're there to protect us when needed similar to what uh, basically what happened with the House of Commons. Corporal Sun getting extra treatment there was quite something because we tried to interview him a number of times. He just didn't want the hero treatment and yeah. neither does Kevin Vickers. Yeah. He was quite happy yeah. to stay yeah. at the back. All right, mm -hmm. the unity can end now. We can go back to <laughs> regular political <laughs> discussions. I find it interesting that Stephen Harper is still giving uh, Kathleen Wynne of Ontario the big uh, chill. Uh, yet uh, tomorrow, uh, Scott Sims, your um, your premier comes to town. He's only been premier for less than three months, and yet the prime minister's happy to sit down with him. Uh, Stella, help me through here. You're an Ontario conservative. Why won't your guy sit down with an Ontario premier who's asked repeatedly, and today sent letters from over a handful of cabinet ministers saying, please sit down with them and your own ministers? What's going on? You know, Don, I'm starting to think that this uh, this premier is enjoying talking about having a meeting and uh, more than she is actually having a meeting. And I, I think, frankly, this uh, her style is confrontational and uh, it doesn't impress me at all that uh, she seems to be spending all of this time and energy doing this uh, and instead of putting her own house in order and those of us who live in Ontario we understand that there are um, huge issues to be dealt with that she is not dealing with and this is a province that has run a deficit for 10 years we have a structural deficit on Ontario versus our government which is balancing we're balancing our books this year mm -hmm. this is a, a government who clearly has priorities that are all over the map um, instead of uh, concentrating on what's important they don't have a job creation plan they don't have a deficit re reduction plan uh, you know, uh, well, every province instead has she's, that, don't they? There's a lot of pro problems in well, every province. I guess I'm wondering why the largest province in Canada doesn't rate a meeting after a year with the Prime Minister of Canada, yeah. even if she's poking them with sticks all the time. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I know that the, I, I don't. I don't know that there's a reason per se. I, I do know that when she does meet with him, she tends to go to the media right afterwards and, and squawk about some problem or other that the, the prime minister some, something she's terribly, <laughs> yeah, something yeah. irrelevant and, and petty that she's, you know, manages to complain. I mean, she's really, she needs to get her own house in order. All right. <laughs> Scott, um, you're, you're from The Rock. Honest? You're from The Rock. Your guy gets the red carpet tomorrow. If you, if you think that Kathleen Wynne is squawking, I got two words for you. <laughs> Danny <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Danny Williams she's was outright at war. No, she's actually quite nice mm. compared to Danny Williams, but she met with him. Why? Maybe because he's a conservative, and of course, Mr. Harper is a conservative as well. I don't understand what you meet with uh, Cuillard. 
You meet with other premiers. I remember when I first came in here, and the, the Conservatives first got elected in 2006, and I'll never forget this, Don, when, when the late Jim Flaherty, God love him, stood up and said, the days of squabbling between the feds and the provinces are over. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why they're over is because he doesn't talk to them, <laughs> right? When was the last time you saw a first minister's conference? Oh, it's that, ridiculous. Since... Paul Davis oh. now, the premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, now they're into a squabble. Obviously, there's a great misunderstanding. I'm not sure if either Davis or Harper understood what was being promised. But all of a sudden, he's got this meeting to try to figure out. I, I think basically what's going to happen is He's going to come all the way to Ottawa from Newfoundland and Labrador and say, and Mr. Harper, the Prime Minister, is going to look at him and say, I'm sorry, can't help you. <laughs> thanks for it, coming. It, it, yeah, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. but, but that's about it. It's uh -huh. unfortunate, but this Kathleen Wynne thing I find absolutely staggering. I, I don't understand what, is it because she actively campaigns for the federal Liberals? Uh -huh. Will he not meet with NDP? premiers because they actively campaign for the federal I don't NDP. know. Robert Chisholm, I need your thoughts on this one quickly, though. I find it extraordinary. I mean, it, it, it's so disrespectful to the voters of, of uh, Ontario, frankly. They decided this is a federation. It has in the constant, we have in the constitution two levels of government, right. the provincial and the national. And the people of Ontario decided who their government was going to be. And it's the prime minister's responsibility to deal, regardless of whether he likes her or likes what she does, he has a responsibility to meet with her. It's about a partnership and yeah, the, you issue. know, the Prime Minister, the national government has to work with the provincial governments, regardless of their political stripe, in order to solve their problems. And, and uh, I, you know, I find it extraordinarily disrespectful when that doesn't happen. And then you have the likes of, uh, of the Premier of, of Newfoundland Labrador who has to threaten right. the Prime Minister in order to get a meeting. Well, well I, 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 you know, I do. Well, we got to get. I want to get to this. I got to move quickly. Species yeah. at risk. Uh, we had Megan Leslie on this week. She was talking about how that was one of the overlooked stories. But yeah. we, lo and behold, out comes a story today talking about that Canada has actually refused uh, to join treaties and and uh, resolutions more than any other country on the planet oh, yeah. to protect yeah. species. Yeah. I'll start with you then, yeah. Robert. Yeah, I mean, well, what what do you make of that? Why <laughs> why are we sort of holding back on this? There, there's 76 species that they have. Uh, put ex ex exceptions on. In other words, they will not recognize them as being endangered. Right. This is the same government who, by the way, the, the Minister of Environment and the Minister of Fisheries in February were uh, deemed to be breaking the law uh, by a federal judge because they weren't uh, actually moving forward with their legislation and putting forward plans to actually deal with endangered species. I mean, it's it's a huge. And I asked this question in FOPO the other day in in our Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans, and even the senior staff at the Department of Fisheries and Oceans couldn't explain why the government was doing Stella, this. Why are you yeah. uh, not well, protecting species at risk? I, you know, I. S I think what we're talking about today is the, is the CITES, the um, mm -hmm. Convention on International Trade of right. Endangered Species. 76. So just so that you know, those the um, they're actually not. There's no 76. refusal. It's what Canada has done is filed no reservations, uh, no which means back. it's really a very technical. It's not a substantive um, uh, disagreement whatsoever. It's a very technical um, process that allows us to uh, have a, an extended time period to put those in place there, domestically. Every other country we is have doing contrary, absolutely contrary no, no, no. every other country. Yeah. We have absolutely every intention. They have said we're not going to act this. on this. Yeah, we have absolutely every intention of, in, of listing those as soon as, um, as soon as we just we ask for extra every other, time. Last word Very Scott. technical. Every other country. Japan has no. filed 19. United Kingdom has filed to. only 7. United States of America filed absolutely none. It doesn't seem to be a technical thing for them. Why is it for us? This is one of the yeah, biggest just, mysteries just I've ever time, seen. A little more time. Uh, well, that's all. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's you, all it is. You, you, you have every hired option. so many people no, no, within the department to deal extent. with this. Two of them are the polar bear and the poor beagle shark that are both on the endangered and list. Every intention and of making and, sure and that they're, they're not this traded government is not going to happen. They are endangered species. Shame. Thank you all we for disagreeing so vehemently. It restores my faith in political. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you all.